Come snow or sunshine, day or night, Mr. President, we're close to sealing the deal to change our country for the better, to finally hold insurance companies accountable, and to make health care affordable for folks in this country. Right now, we are all paying uh, far too much for our health insurance. Many of us can't get the health insurance at all. And even worse, insurance companies don't always live up to their end of the bargain. Sure, a lot of folks are happy with the health care they have. Our doctors and our nurses and hospitals and med medical research are some of the best in the world. But when you add it all up, many are paying too much for it. Some are paying nothing for it. And overall, too many lives are lost. Too much money is wasted. And too many folks are falling through the cracks. They're calling out for help. We've all heard their voices. Now I want you to hear their stories. They're ordinary folks who stand to lose everything unless we reform our health care system. I support this health care reform bill because it saves lives and it saves money. It saves Medicare. It's tough on insurance companies, taking them to a task to ensure affordable and fair coverage. Mr. President, I have a perspective somewhat different than most of my friends here in the Senate. I am and always will be a third-generation Montana farmer. Uh, my wife, Charlotte, and myself still operate our farm. A farmer knows uh, that we have some good years and we have some bad years. I've had my share of bad years, and in fact, uh, many years ago, not long after our first child was born, Charlotte and I had to give up health insurance to make ends meet. We had no other choice but to hope and pray for our health and safety and for the health and safety of our child. Thank God our prayers were answered. Now, I have the honor of serving Montana in the United States Senate, but my story is one of thousands of real Montana families that have been forced to wing it rather than depend on a health care system that works and that holds insurance companies accountable. I know a woman from Ravalli, Montana, who cannot afford health insurance because of her pre-existing condition. She and her husband got letters from their insurance company telling them their premiums were going up $500, $600, $700 per month. Through no fault of their own, their insurance became too expensive, so they gave up. This legislation will, present, will prevent that sort of nonsense in the insurance industry from happening. In this bill, a health insurer's participation in the exchanges will depend on its performance. Insurers that jack up their premiums before the exchanges begin will not be included in those exchanges. That's a powerful incentive to keep premiums affordable. Mr. President, we all have friends and relatives who aren't fortunate enough to have a job where health insurance is part of the deal. So they do what millions of others are forced to do. They hope and they pray that they stay healthy. We've got a problem in this country. It's time for a solution using common sense and fiscal responsibility, and that's why I'm going to vote for this health care reform bill, so we can save lives and save money, so we can save Medicare, so we can hold insurance companies accountable, and so they don't drop people when they are sick or drive families into bankruptcy. Because of tax credits, this bill is good for small businesses. It gives eligible small businesses access for up to six years of tax credits. That will help small businesses buy health insurance for their employees. Because of tough new rules for in the insurance industry, it's good for families and it's good for our kids. And because of common sense ideas like cross-state insurance markets, more competition and more choices, it's good for millions of Americans who until now had to rely on luck, hope, and prayer. If we don't pass this bill, our entire country could fall apart. <clears throat> I'm sorry. If we don't pass this bill, our entire economy could fall beyond repair. Mr. President, right now we're working hard to rebuild our economy, and it's working. We're creating jobs and investing in basic infrastructure needed to get our economy back out of the ditch. 
Fixing our broken health care system is part of that job. Over the fast, past few years, I've heard from thousands of Montanans telling me about the need to fix health care. One of them is a lady named Roxy Burley. Roxy owns a hair salon in Billings, Montana. She just bought a home. As all small business owners, she works hard. But she can't afford health insurance. So she says she's walking a tightrope. Her home and business on one side, and her health care is on the other side. If Rocky gets sick, she worries she'll lose her home and her business. In Montana, our economy relies on people like Roxy Burley, small business folks. We can't afford to have our economy walking a tightrope. In this bill, Roxy will be protected from losing her home and business. Her annual out-of-pocket expenses are capped at no more than $5,950 per year. Mr. President, I want to sh uh, share another story. It's about Mindy Renfro. She lives in Missoula, Montana. Mindy got breast cancer not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. And these were four different types of breast cancer. Mr. President, the same cancer didn't come back every time. She got a different cancer each time. The first two times, uh, Mindy's insurance paid for her treatment. The third time, the insurance company called her and said, we're sorry, but we're not going to pay. The underwriter, she says, determined her chances of survival were just too slim. So instead, they offered to send a hospice nurse. Well, Mindy was a, single, is, was a single mom in her early 40s, and she was simply not ready to check out. So she asked about her options. She was told if she wanted to uh, start chemo, she would have to come up with more than $100,000 in cash. Her only option was to sell her home. So Mindy and her children sold their home. They packed up and moved out of their home so they could sell it and so she could start treatment that she needed to stay alive. After many years of trying to repay that debt, Mindy recently declared bankruptcy. I've heard many stories from folks in Montana that are in the same boat that Mindy is in. Uh, this isn't good business. This needs to stop. And it's why I support this health care reform bill. I support it because under this bill, Mindy and people like her wouldn't have had to declare bankruptcy. She would have had the insurance, despite her pre-existing condition of being a cancer survivor. And her annual out-of-pocket expenses would have been capped at no more than $5,950 per year, not the $100,000 in cash that she needed just to start her cancer treatment. This bill is strong and decisive and is tough on insurance companies, so they cannot say sorry but no when you get sick. So they cannot say sorry but no if you have a pre-existing condition. Another story, Mr. President, is about former ranchers Dan and Pat Dijon. Now this is, picture here is a picture of Pat. Uh, Dan and Pat used to own a cattle ranch in northwestern Montana. They used to own a cattle ranch in northwestern Montana. The ranch had been in their family for four generations. Dan and Pat couldn't afford health insurance. And then Dan was diagnosed with cancer. To pay the bills, they had to make the painful decision to sell off their ranch. Now, I'm going to tell you when a piece of land has been in the family for four generations, you get an attachment to that piece of land. But nonetheless, Dan got cancer, they had to pay the bills, they sold the family ranch. Under this bill, the Dijongs would have had access to subsidies so that they could afford health insurance in the first place. They never would have had to sell the ranch to pay the doctor's bills. I want to read you what Pat wrote to me about that experience. She said, quote, the cancer ravaged Dan's body, but selling our ranch to pay for the medical costs broke his spirit. Dan Dijon lost his battle with cancer two years ago. All his bills were paid, 
but the ranch that had been in the family for four generations were gone, as well as Dan. After that, <clears throat> Pat still cannot afford health insurance today. Under this health care reform bill, uh, getting sick won't force folks like Dan and Pat DeJong to sell their land that's been in their family for generations. That's because it limits the amount of money you'd have to pay out of pocket at a rate you can afford based on how much you earn. And that means no Americans would have to sell their homes or their family ranches to pay the medical bills. I know a lot of folks already have health insurance and they're wondering, how is this going to affect me? Well, let me be clear. If you like your plan, you get to keep it. If you don't, you can look for a more affordable plan that works best for you and your family. Everyone will have access to affordable health, affordable health insurance. Right now, those with health insurance are subsidizing those without it. The other day, I struck up a conversation with a trucker back in Montana who told me, I don't need insurance. I don't want insurance because I don't get sick. I asked, what happens if you get into an accident? Being a trucker, that's always a possibility. He said, all I have to do is go to the emergency room where they take care of me. No questions asked. That's exactly the problem, Mr. President. Uh, when everybody is insured, costs will go down because no one will be paying extra to cover the folks who rely on the emergency room for health care that they eventually never pay for. Just common sense. It saves lives and it saves money. Mr. President, I've been on the phone with tens of thousands of Montanans over the past few weeks answering questions about health care. A lot of them want to know how we're going to pay for this bill. How much will it increase their debt? It won't increase our debt one thin dime. In fact, it will lower our deficits by hundreds of billions of dollars, $132 billion over the next 10 years alone, reduces the deficit even more in the decade after that. The fact is this bill saves money is pretty important to me. It doesn't add to the deficit, it cuts billions of dollars in government waste. It requires a bigger chunk, chunk of your premiums to go directly to better health care instead of administrative costs and profits. And it saves money for families by lowering costs for everyone. And by limiting the amount of money you have to pay out of pocket for health care. And by emphasizing wellness and prevention, the low hanging fruit of health care reform. And by holding insurance companies accountable so we don't pay more than our fair share for the health care that we need. Mr. President, when you turn on the TV these days or open the newspaper, you see all sorts of spin about the health care reform and Medicare. It amazes me how distorted the facts have become. I've read the bill. The plain as dirt fact is it makes Medicare stronger. All guaranteed Medicare benefits stay just as they are. They're, gu they're guaranteed. Seniors are guaranteed to keep the benefits like hospital stays, access to doctors, home health care, nursing homes, and prescription drugs. How do we make Medicare stronger? We make it stronger by getting rid of wasteful spending, by making prescription drugs for seniors more affordable, and by spending your money smarter. Without this bill, Medicare will be on the rocks within a matter of months. If we don't fix it now, uh, it will go broke, leaving entire generations in the lurch. Millions of Americans have worked hard all their lives for Medicare benefits. They've earned it. That's why we're making Medicare better, not worse. That's common sense. The same goes for VA health care. This bill does not affect VA health care or TRICARE. I serve on the VA committee. Over the past three years, we've made good progress in living up the promises made to our veterans. We still have a lot of work to do, but this health care reform legislation takes us forward even further for America's veterans. Finally, this bill preserves some of the most important parts of quality health care, the relationship between you and your doctor, and the freedom of choice you have as a patient. In Montana, as in many parts of this country, we don't tolerate the government snooping around our private lives or making personal decisions for us. Health care is no exception. This health care reform bill not only saves lives, it saves money, it saves Medicare. It keeps the government out of the exam room and the waiting room. Mr. President, I go home to Montana just about every weekend to visit with the folks and hear what's on their minds. 
I meet with doctors and nurses, hospital administration, administrators, and regular folks from all over the state to hear their concerns. Everywhere I go, health care is the number one issue. And it's clear that the worst option is to do nothing at all. If that happens, insurance companies won't be held accountable. Health care costs will continue to break families as costs go up. And people who need treatment to stay alive won't get it. I know a fellow farmer who worked some land back in Montana. When he get, got sick, he had to sell off entire chunks of his family farm to pay the bills, piece by piece. And piece by piece, we watched as he made pain, painful sacrifices for his health care. Piece by piece, his livelihood was broken apart. No American deserves that. People are calling out for help because a lot of the folks are falling through the cracks. I say to them, we're listening. We hear you and we're doing something about it. That's why this is a good bill. It's a bill that I support. It will allow Americans to get the health insurance they have needed and the insurance will be affordable. It is a result of a lot of hard work and working together to do what's right for this country. For America's rural families, seniors, veterans, small businesses, family farms and ranches. People of this country deserve no less.